join us again. We have another Bible story to enjoy. This one I'm sure is one you've heard before, but it is a story of Captain Naaman and Mrs. Naaman and someone we'll meet in just a little minute. Now, Captain Naaman, he lived in the country called Syria, and he and his wife thought that they needed to worship idols. That's who their God was. They didn't know about the God in heaven like you do. So every day they would go outside their house to a little place where they had a special idol and they would bow down and worship that idol. But one day, Captain Naaman noticed something. What did he notice? Maybe it just started right there on his arm. Do you see that? But then it started to get more and more until eventually, these will stick on the board and not on teacher, eventually he had spots all over his body. <gasps> At this time, this was a disease you didn't want to have. You don't even want to have this disease now, but now we have fixes for it, but not in Captain Naaman's time. If you got this disease, which was called leprosy, you had to live far away from your family. You could never see them again. And eventually, some of your fingers may fall off, your nose may fall off. Oh, that would be terrible, wouldn't it? Mrs. Naaman cried and cried. Oh, what am I going to do without Captain Naaman? Captain Naaman went off to talk to the king to see if maybe he had an idea. And it was at that time that we had someone who came to talk to Mrs. Naaman. Now we don't know her name, the Bible doesn't tell us, but we'll call her Little Maid. Little Maid came to Mrs. Naaman and said, why are you crying? Why are you crying so much? She said, oh, Captain Naaman. Little Maid said, what's the matter with Captain Naaman? Oh, Captain Naaman, he got the spots, he got the spots of leprosy. Oh, Little Maid knew that was bad because there were people in her home country of Israel who had leprosy and she knew about them. Little Maid wasn't from the country of Syria where Captain and Mrs. Naaman lived. She used to live in the country of Israel, but she was taken captive and given as a slave to them. That could have made her be really mean and really angry, but instead she chose to have Jesus in her heart. She said, Mrs. Naaman, I know someone who can help Captain Naaman. All he needs to do is go to the land of Israel and talk to the prophet Elisha. Hmm. Well, if that could fix him, why not? So, when Captain Naaman came home from seeing the king that day, Mrs. Naaman said, Little maid said that if you go to Israel and see the prophet Elisha, he can fix you of your leprosy. Hmm. Captain Naaman didn't really know what to think about that, but he said, all right. So he again went back to his friend, the king, and he said, King, can I go to the land of Israel to see the prophet Elisha? And the king said, oh, yes, let me write you a letter. And so he wrote him a letter to say why he was coming. He wasn't coming to make war. He was just coming to see if he could get help. So Captain Naaman got with a bunch of his soldiers, and he had a fancy horse and cart that he got in and he had soldiers that ran along behind him, maybe one that even led his horse, and down the road they went on the way to Israel. And as they got to Israel, the houses started to look a little bit different. They were a little more earthy and a little more rustic, and eventually they got to the home of the prophet Elisha. They went to see the king first, but we won't worry about that part of the story. They got to the house of the prophet Elisha, and the prophet Elisha didn't even come out to see Captain Naaman. Oh, Captain Naaman said, I'm a big and important man. Why are you sending this servant out to see me? And the servant came and he talked to him and he said, my master says you need to go down to the Jordan River and wash three, no, two, no, seven times. Wash seven times in the river. <sighs> he didn't really like that. And the prophet's servant went away. So now he was sitting there thinking, well, I, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't 
doesn't want to go to that river. That river Jordan, it's dirty and it's gross and it's brown and it's not pretty like the water in my hometown of Syria. But his soldier said, Mr. Uh, Mr. Naaman, you need to go because if he would have asked you to do some big thing and pay a lot of money, would you have done it? Well, yeah. He asked you to do a simple thing. Why not try the simple thing? So he turned his chariot around and headed back down to the river Jordan. Now, he got down to the river Jordan and the bank of the river was oh so mighty. And he came down with all of his spots and eventually, see, gotta get some spots on, eventually, he got down to the river and he got to where he started dunking in the water. His soldiers stood on the bank and they watched him and they maybe they helped him count. Let's help him count. One time, came up, still has spots. Two times, mm -mm. three times, four times, five times, six times. Oh getting tired of going down in this nasty water. But maybe one of his guards said, just one more time, Captain Naaman, just one more time. And this time, when he dumped down in the water and came back up, his spots were gone. Oh, oh, he was so excited. He looked at his arms. He looked at his fingers. He looked at his toes and his legs. They were gone. Oh, he was so excited. He was so excited. He came up fast out of that water, got with his guards, said, let's go home. Let's go home. On the way home, though, Captain Naaman remembered to do something that we ought to do. He remembered to stop and say thank you. And he stopped and said thank you to the prophet Elisha. And he said, thank you for making me better, prophet Elisha. Prophet Elisha said, oh, no. It wasn't me. It was the God in heaven. So he was so excited. He got on his chariot and he started going home to his wife and he met her. And when she saw him, she was so excited. Captain Naaman, Captain Naaman, your spots are gone. You're made well. Did prophet Elisha heal you? Oh no, said Captain Naaman. The God of heaven healed me. So this time, as they gathered to pray at their house, it was no longer in front of the idols, but it was in front of the God of heaven. They knelt down and said, thank you, God in heaven. Thank you for making me better. We hope you guys have a good week, and we hope to see you back at Sabbath School soon.